Fought it against a team they have a tough time with. That's the fourth interception of the year for Jackson. Two keys to that play. Pepper Johnson coming on a big blitz, and Byers can't block him. And watch how Jackson reacts when he sees Randall Cunningham throwing this ball off. Watch how fast he fills up. This is called game planning and knowing what your opponents have done in the past. Very nice anticipation by Jackson. Greg Jackson with his fourth interception and the ninth for the Giants this year, and that will give them good field position when they start from the 45-yard line. Keep in mind that the Eagles very much concerned over a porous defense last week. They yielded the most yards since December of 89, 410, and that was by the Packer offense. Cross the tight end in motion. And a play fake. Hostetler to throw on first down. That's time. And the pass is for Howard Cross. Right in between two defenders. And he gets inside the 30-yard line. Gain of 26 and a first down with John Booty defending. And this is something Mike Holmgren's Packers last week did a lot of. Bringing their tight end in motion and getting him down the field. And Philadelphia couldn't solve the problem last week and don't do it today. And one of the reasons is they didn't get near Hostetler. Watch Riesenberg going against White. That's called putting a little stuff on the best defensive end in football. Dave Meggett is in the game. First down at the 28. Normally he's been a third down back. Three wide receivers in Meggett. And Hostetler tries to get the ball off with an eagle on his shirt from behind. Meggett was the intended receiver, and Reggie White very nearly picked up the sack. A quarterback can put up with late pressure, but there's very little he can do with quick pressure. Watch Harmon right now. Reggie White, Harmon, the whole front four seems to sag in inside, and when you're getting Reggie White inside, you've got to, as an offensive line, keep track of where 92 is. You can't put your center or guard one-on-one -on -one against this guy because he cannot be blocked that close to the ball. His reactions are too good. Second down and 10 on the 28-yard line. Ten and a half to go in the first quarter. Once again, the time and the pass was intended for Derek Brown. Giants are going to be using a lot of two tight ends today, and back there defending was Eric Allen. You know, up to this point, we got a little pressure on that two plays ago from Reggie White, but the Giants are coming out, and they're doing to the, to the Eagles defense what the Eagles defense claims nobody can do to them, and that's just come out and throw straight drop-back passes and dare this rush to come after their quarterback. Third down and ten. On the 28, Mark McMillan, rookie from Alabama, expected to play considerably, is in a quarterback for the Eagles. Hostetler's pass, and it's caught. Stephen Baker, and that'll be good enough for a giant first down. 13-yard pickup, Eric Allen defending on the play. Another good job by the New York Giants line, holding off this rush just long enough. Reggie White coming over Bart Oates on a one-on-one. -on -one. He'll get there more often than not, but Hostetler stepped right up into that throw, and a nice job by Baker of staying with it. But watch it again. That's a bull rush, folks. There's no move or quickness there. That's a 310-pound defensive end. Giants were sacked five times last week against Denver, but they have been nearly perfect inside the red zone this year. That is not an impressive start from inside the red zone in this game. A loss of one yard for Jared Bunch. Well, they're testing the area I think you have to run against Rich Kotite's defense. You've got to go inside in between the tackles. You know, much has been made of Jerome Brown not being here this year after passing away in that tragic accident, but that's where Green Bay ran against them. They ran right at Harmon, they ran right at Evans, they attacked the middle of the line, and Golick wasn't in on many tackles for Bud Carson either. We may see more of Mike Pitts in this game as a result. Second down and 11. Here's a play fake. Hostetler has some time. He gets rid of the ball and throws it out of the end zone. He was chased by Andy Harmon and had to throw it away. You know, actually, after seeing Jeff Hostetler Sunday night go off the field in that silly-looking little cart in that game against the Broncos, he's holding his ribs. He looked like it was something near fatal. 
suddenly Wednesday he shows up at practice, he's throwing the ball, he's feeling good. I mean, it was uh, a little curious, curious to say the least. They're the backup quarterbacks. Kent Graham would be the man to come in. Actually, Ray Handley said that Hostetler is actually healthier this week at the same time as he was last week. He took all the snaps Thursday and Friday, so he's feeling a lot better. Third down and 11 at the 17. Chris Callaway is the third wide receiver for the Giants. Hostetler on third down. Overthrows Callaway. So the Giants miss an opportunity to get six. And they'll try to get on the board with a field goal. You know, a fan on the field or in the stands would say, gee, this ball is high. How can he not just fire this in? Look what he's throwing over. Not only the rush, but he's throwing over the linebackers. There's no room to zip this ball in because of the drops the linebackers took for the Eagles. Matt Barr suffered a strained right knee Thursday kicking. So that's why the Giants have two place kickers available today. Ken Willis was signed yesterday, but Barr is out there. And a 35-yard field goal attempt by Barr, and the kick is good. Feels good enough to give the Giants a lead. With 8.49 remaining in the first quarter, 3-0 New York. The National Football League on CBS Sports. Along with Randy Cross, this is Dick Stockton in Giants Stadium. Giants capitalizing on a turnover. A Greg Jackson interception and then Matt Barr kicked a 35-yard field goal to give the Giants a 3-0 lead, but they'll start from their own 17 on this drive. And you've got to think Hostetler's in that huddle right now talking to those big fellas. He's got it up front trying to get the point across even a little more directly that, guys, i got to have a little protection. i got to have some time to throw the ball. By the same token, Jim Fassel and Ray Hanley for the Giants have to get some three and quick five-step drop passes off to take some of that heat off of Hostep. Mike Pitts has replaced Andy Harmon a tackle for the Eagles. So Pitts number 74 is in there, and on first down, Rocky Hastings with a good cut, brings it up beyond the 20-yard line, and a gain of five yards. Hampton coming in third in the NFC in rushing. And that takes a little heat off a of pass rush if you start slashing them inside and look for them to continue to attack inside. And an injured player. It's one of the Eagles' front four, and it appears to be Clyde Simmons, who coming into this game was second in the NFC with 11 quarterback sacks. One behind Chris Dolman of the Vikings. And that's something from a strength standpoint. This Philadelphia Eagles needs the, need the two big defensive end. They've had Reggie White from one side and Clyde Simmons from the other. This would be a very, very crucial injury for the Eagles. Because if you're the Giants and he's down and he's not in there, you attack the whole left side with your running game. You match big Jumbo Elliott in on whoever takes Simmons' spot. And keep in mind, uh, when you have Reggie White and not Clyde Simmons, you can afford to double-team Reggie White. You can't do that all the time when you have a Clyde Simmons. And that's part of the story is why the Eagles have had perhaps, uh, in recent years, the best front four in the league. Well, the backup for Clyde Simmons, too, is Mike Flores, who at 6'3", 260, is significantly smaller than Clyde Simmons and gives up a whole bunch to Jumbo. Nobody really knows what Jumbo weighs, but I know it's a lot more than 260. The Eagles this week lost Britt Hager who was their fourth linebacker and effective against the run with a herniated disc. He's on injured reserve, and of course, Andre Waters has been out, the strong safety. Simmons gets up and walking off on his own power. There's Randall Cunningham on the sideline with Herschel Walker going over the, the Xeroxes, a little drawing on there, trying to figure out how do you get not only Keith Byers your tight end, but more importantly, I think, is how do you get a Herschel Walker involved in your passing game? Here's a guy that lined up in the slot, lined up at wide receiver, caught over 70 balls for Dallas one year. Throw him the ball. Those are your weapons. Mike Flores indeed has replaced Clyde Simmons. Second down and four for the Giants on their 23. and gets good yardage. A pickup of 13 yards. Mike Golick and Eric Allen on the play. Well, some running backs scoot and some others kind of squirt down the field. This guy just takes yardage. He doesn't ask, he takes it. A 250-some-odd pound fullback 
when you're dragging defensive line